We're back today with uh, Dr. Donald Tashkin at the UCLA Medical Research Center. For those of you who were on our last show, you saw that great interview we did with him. We're going to continue it today. Thank you for joining us again, Doctor. Um, last time you were talking about how uh, your study on the relationship between marijuana and tobacco and lung cancer kind of showed that there was no, and I'm, correct me if I'm wrong in this, but that marijuana smoking did not increase a person's uh, risk of getting lung cancer. And we kind of ended by talking about a little bit of a possible protective effect. You, it's, you said it was, you said it was a, a non, not an unreasonable hypothesis. So this, this is something that should be looked into. Are you going to be doing that kind of a study? Or do you know anyone who is going to be studying uh, if there is any potential uh, uh, protective effect? Uh, well, I know that there are a number of investigators who are interested in the, uh, the anti-tumoral effect or the possible anti-tumoral effect of, uh, of THC, uh, particularly Italian investigators who are experts in cannabinoid chemistry. Mm -hmm. THC belongs to a group of compounds called cannabinoids, and they're interested in, in elucidating the mechanism of that anti-tumoral effect. But, that's an, but they're, they're looking at mechanisms in animal models and cell culture systems that may or may not be relevant to the human condition. I didn't mention that there's one other uh, possible mechanism that might explain our re results, and that is that even though uh, smoking one joint a day of marijuana might be equivalent to smoking four tobacco cigarettes, it amplifies the effect of lesser numbers of joints of smoking compared to uh, tobacco cigarettes, the number of tobacco cigarettes that are generally smoked. Nonetheless, there are very few marijuana smokers who smoke as much tobacco as tobacco smokers, even when you use that four to one, correct for that four to one equation. Also, that four to one equation is probably not accurate because marijuana joints are not of equal weight to tobacco cigarettes. It's probably more like two to one. So in order, and we know that if you smoke less than about a half a pack of cigarettes a day, that's 10 cigarettes a day, uh, that your risk for developing cancer is not that much greater than a n never smoker. And even if you smoke up to one pack a day, it's still not that much greater. So there's a dose response with tobacco. So uh, if you take uh, one pack a day for, let's say, 20 years, is 20 pack years. Well, in order to the equivalent amount of marijuana joints to 20 pack years, that is 20 cigarettes a day for 20 years. So that's 400, that would be equivalent to 400 joint years. And, and be, uh, so, or let's say there's a two to one ratio so of exposure, so that would be 100 joint years. Well, we study damn few patients with 100 joint years. We studied a couple. So it may be that people who smoke marijuana just don't smoke enough to expose their lungs to sufficient quantity of carcinogens to produce these changes. Our, I can tell you that our research focus has shifted to the immune effects, the effects of THC on immunity, which does have relevance to medicinal marijuana. Mm. We know that THC is a powerful immune suppressant, and in fact, one an anti-inflammatory uh, uh, compound. In fact, one of the possible reasons why people who smoke marijuana don't seem to be at increased risk of developing emphysema is that to develop emphysema, you have to activate certain inflammatory cells in the lung, known as alveolar macrophages. Well, uh, we have shown that THC impairs the activity of these cells. So in a sense, that might be protective against the development of COPD or emphysema, but it could have a harmful side as well. It's, it's anti-inflammatory effect is a two-edged sword because you need those inflammatory cells to protect you against bacteria and, and other microorganisms. So it's possible that people who smoke marijuana, uh, particularly a lot of marijuana, may be at increased risk of pneumonia and other respiratory infections, particularly if they have underlying immune uh, deficits, as is true in patients with HIV uh, disease and patients with cancer on cancer chemotherapy. So we're interested in further exploring the effects of THC on the immune system, the ability of the immune system to mount, for example, a response to vaccines. It could, it's conceivable that that could be impaired. That's the direction of our research now. Okay.
we talking about the dangers of, of marijuana seem to be what you're concentrating on is danger of smoked marijuana. I'm wondering, has there been any, are you looking into any kind of studies of people who vaporize marijuana instead? Well, I think that's a reasonable approach to developing um, THC and old marijuana in a form uh, that would be uh, uh, eliminate exposure of the lung to uh, carcinogens in the smoke and, and other noxious substances in the smoke, uh, the oxidants, etc. So that uh, vaporization would seem to be a reasonable approach. Um, what is your opinion of the medical benefits of marijuana? Is there medical benefits to uh, utilization of marijuana? Well, I know that THC has a lot of potential medicinal value, and, and I don't think there's any controversy about that in terms of its anti nociceptive effect. I mean, it's a, a reduction in pain. Uh, there, uh, some evidence of reduced spasticity in, 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 in animal models in, in particular. Uh, and obviously we know uh, about the effects on, on nausea and vomiting and on appetite. It's, and THC is approved for use, as you know, in maybe a form that's uh, not that um, agreeable uh, uh, as, 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 a, as a capsule. I think Marinol is a capsule. Yes, it is. Uh, and, um, uh, so there are clearly medicinal benefits There might, in fact, the anti-inflammatory effect could be beneficial. We have a lot of anti-inflammatory compounds that we use for a variety of inflammatory diseases, uh, like rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, we know that inflammation is associated with uh, many, many diseases, including acute stroke that magnifies the impact of the stroke, and there's some suggestion that uh, THC and perhaps other cannabinoids may have some beneficial effect in reducing uh, the, uh, 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 the extent of brain damage following a stroke. So yes, there's a lot of potential benefit. The question is, how do you deliver THC in a way as to optimize the benefit-risk ratio? Right, that's almost any medicine is, is, is like that. It's, you talked about Marinol, which is synthetic THC, and I know there's another drug just recently approved for nausea and vomiting that has a synthetic THC. Is there any difference between synthetic THC and natural THC? Well, I, I don't know that there's any difference between synthetic THC itself and natural THC, THC itself, but there's a marked difference between synthetic THC and even natural THC and the mix of compounds in marijuana smoke because marijuana smoke contains uh, scores of other cannabinoid compounds including cannabidiol that may have some additional, may have a medicinal benefit on their own. Yeah. Um, on a scale of 1 to 10 with like with 10 being absolute worst and 1 being no dangerous side effects at all, how would you rate marijuana as, as a medicine? Uh, I think in terms of short-term uh, risks, short-term short -term risks would be minimal, other than the um, effects uh, on behavior. I mean, there are some individuals who are not used mm -hmm. to smoking marijuana, when they first smoke it, they uh, panic, they develop anxiety, etc. Uh, but aside from those consequences, uh, I, there are very few, certainly not any life-threatening effects of acute marijuana use. And the reason for that is that, one of the reasons is that there are very few, if any, cannabinoid receptors in the brain stem where, we have, where the vital centers are located that regulate breathing and cardiovascular responses. Maybe there's an evolutionary reason why there isn't so <laughs> uh, Are you satisfied with the, the, the pace and the number of, re of research going on in this country in regards to uh, medicinal marijuana and other problem, so problems associated with it? Well, as you well know, uh, that the, uh, the uh, federal uh, government uh, doesn't uh, consider itself to be in the business of of, uh, or hasn't historically, of evaluating medicinal marijuana. It, uh, essentially, the book has been closed after uh, the Congressional Act that declared, that was back in 1937, I believe, yeah. that marijuana does not have any medicinal value, and thus it's a, uh, that's why it's a Schedule I compound. And that issue has not been reopened. 
Uh, I believe that the uh, federal government would be, uh, well, I don't know for sure, but now in these days of budget <laughs> restraints, when it's almost impossible to get any grant funded, um, but I, I believe that the NIH would be interested in uh, evaluating the therapeutic potential of uh, individual cannabinoids in um, in preclinical in preclinical work, but might look askance at uh, smoke marijuana as a medicinal. Um, so you, your study was was used by uh, I believe it was NIDA. Uh, to uh, back in 1998 as one of the reasons for their um, marijuana use preventative initiative. Um, and I'm wondering, do you still f feel that your studies are, are relevant to the marijuana use prevention initiative? Well, um, I, uh, as a pulmonologist, I feel that smoking any substance can be harmful. I mean, we may or may not be able to uh, show convincing evidence of harm in all cases, but we know that uh, smoke marijuana, like smoke tobacco, contains an awful lot of, of noxious material. Mm -hmm. And that uh, compounds that are we know are tissue damaging. And uh, so that I'm not uh, opposed to the concept of exploiting the uh, therapeutic potential of THC in one way or another, but I, I uh, uh, would be reluctant uh, to uh, endorse uh, smoking of marijuana for medicinal purposes. Uh, or on, on the other hand, I recognize that uh, in, 19, in 2006 we don't we have limited options in terms of delivering THC for medicinal purposes. Uh, marijuana can be grown quite readily. It's an ubiquitous plant that can be grown anywhere. And uh, so that you could look upon it as herbal medicine. Uh, if it didn't have the, um, the, the baggage of the abuse potential associated with its behavioral effects, there probably wouldn't be much opposition to its use. But the opposition, I think, results from the effects on the central nervous system. What is it like being in a state where the voters have approved medicinal marijuana? Does that have any effect on, on your ability to do research or anything? Uh, no. As a matter of fact, uh, the uh, I still have to go through the same regulatory hoops that <coughs> any investigator does in any state, uh, which means uh, the, you need to get funding usually from the National Institute of Drug Abuse, but in California, there was a California, um, I forget what it was called, it was a California initiative that allowed set aside some funds for oh, yes. research in medicinal marijuana that that has has stopped be partly mainly for, for budgetary reasons I think rather than for political reasons although I can't be entirely <laughs> sure of that of course there was a change in the governorship right. uh, but uh, but other than than that program it's, it's mostly the federal government you have to get approval from the Depart the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration to do any studies involving uh, administering marijuana for any purpose, whether it's for medicinal purposes or to evaluate harmful effects. You have to get FDA approval because it would be an investigational new drug, whether, again, used for uh, looking at harmful effects or beneficial effects, either way. And then your own local institutional review board in California, you have to go through the California Research Advisory Panel. You go through a number of different regulatory hoops, and I think this is true anywhere, in order to study marijuana for any purpose. It's, it's quite a daunting process. It I certainly is. And, it's, and a lot of researchers just, it's almost impossible. It's next to impossible, but not impossible, as Donald Abrams will tell you. <laughs> yes, I, he will tell as, as you will tell me, because you're obviously good. You know, we had tried, you know, this, this lung cancer study was of, of great interest to us, and we thought that, that well, maybe there is a potential uh, beneficial effect from in, in, in preventing lung cancer, and it certainly deserved to at least be researched. Uh, I w wouldn't go that uh, far, well, I wouldn't go that far I wouldn't say that there's a potential benefit of marijuana. There might be a potential benefit of THC. THC, yeah. yeah right. There's something in the marijuana, whether it's the THC or one of the other cannabinoids. There's something in it that might be a benefit. Anyway, we just thought this, you know, it should at least be studied. And so we wrote a, a, a letter, a group of us wrote individual letters to our representative, Jerry Lewis, 
and and uh, he sent us a letter back um, that I would just like to share with you. Um, we said we asked him, you know, we there's we sent him a copy of the article about your study and saying, you know, we think it at least deserves to be because lung cancer is such a dangerous uh, disease and all this kind of stuff. And he wrote back that the study headed by, apparently he contacted your office. He said that the study headed by Dr. Donald Tash can certainly provide some interesting results. Not mentioned in the article included with your correspondent were comments made by Dr. Tashkin's research partner, Dr. Michael Roth. Dr. Roth contends that those who smoke marijuana have significant inflammation to their breathing passages, very much like those who smoke cigarettes, which reduce the body's ability to fight disease and infection. And should that be a reason not to... What, what, do you, what is your comment that, on that? that? Those inflammatory changes, I'm a, I'm a co-author of those papers. Right. They, they were, those studies were carried out as part of our own research program, and Dr. Roth is a collaborator of mine, and we have indeed shown uh, evidence of airway injury, both visually as well as microscopically, that I alluded to before. And, but that, those effects are effects of smoking. Mm -hmm. uh, if you were able to deliver THC in some other form, uh, you wouldn't see these pro-inflammatory effects. You'd probably see anti-inflammatory effects. But so, but that supports my view as well, and I'm in agreement with Dr. Roth, that smoking would not be a reasonable route of administration for therapeutic purposes, say, for inhibiting the growth mm -hmm. of cancer, if it turns out to be, uh, truly have an anti-tumoral effect. But vaporization might be. Vaporization, I think vaporization is, a, is a, a, an interesting and, and certainly less harmful route of delivery of THC for medicinal purposes. I wouldn't deliver it to prevent cancer. I would deliver it to relieve pain or for some other purpose. Okay. Doctor, what, what uh, are your future plans? Do you have any other studies in the works that you might be able to share with us? Uh, as, as I mentioned to you before, that we're, we're primarily interested in, in looking at the anti-inflammatory uh, anti effects of THC, its effects on the immune system, effects on the ability of the body to mount an immune defense against infection. Mm -hmm. That's number one. Number two, we still have uh, tissue from our marijuana uh, cancer studies. Uh, we actually took smears of the um, cells lining the cheek, these are the buccal smears, and from which we can isolate DNA, we have isolated DNA, and so we're looking at uh, genetic susceptibility to cancer. So if you look at risks in subsets of our population for developing cancer, mm -hmm. those who may have more or less susceptibility, we might find different results. We're also looking for possible effects of smoking on um, alterations in the genetic material. So that, that work is proceeding as, as well as the, as the work on the immune system. Well, it sounds like you have your work cut out for you. One last question, and this is kind of an overall thing. Has your, uh, how has your feelings about marijuana changed over the 30, is it still the same as you, as you thought about it 30 years ago, or has it changed as you've done research and read about more research? Well, uh, that's a good question. I'm, I'm, I'm more, um, it is, I am less worried about uh, certain harmful, potential harmful effects, like the effects in producing chronic obstructive pulmonary disease and emphysema, and even carcinogenic effects. I can't say that there's absolutely no effect, but um, I'm um, less concerned about the, the carcinogenic potential. And um, I'm also more uh, intrigued about potential medicinal benefits. Well, Dr. Taskin, I want to thank you for taking the time that you've been the most enlightening interview I think I've done in all the shows. So thank you very much for joining us today. And uh, if you have any questions, um, give us a call. We'll be glad to answer them for you and provide you information about uh, our program. Thank you very much.